Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. everybody thank you for joining us on a brand new episode of the clear to send podcast i am joined with francois how are you francois i'm very good hi royal how are you i'm doing very good uh, it, it's uh morning here on my time I'm having my cup of coffee uh, before i head into work to to work on more wi-fi but thought we'd sneak in an episode here on 80211 packet captures for windows since we've just did one for mac os and because you and I are Mac users, that was an easy one for us to do. But we do have people who listen to the show and also use Windows for their Wi-Fi uh, tasks and analysis. So we thought we'd focus on some packet captures for Windows and and how to do that. There's there's a variety of different ways to do that. Um, but before we get to that, I want to recommend. <clears throat> excuse me. I want to recommend you guys go check out. Um, clear to send.net slash iTunes. Leave us a review if you can about uh, how we're doing. Uh, leave us some feedback and let us know if we you know, get a five-star review. But, <clears throat> well, my throat's not doing very well this morning, but please do review, give us a review. Let us know how we're doing so that way we can actually help, uh, help you guys deliver better content straight to you and that way we can you know, keep the show going. And it's been quite quite the run so far and we just want to deliver more more tailored content to you guys so now let's dive into the packet captures here francois because uh, you've been doing some testing on different ways you could do a packet capture i also have a windows laptop that i use not not too often but um quite a bit where i've got some windows only applications there and and i also have uh, I've, I've used maybe one or two different um applications that I can use for packet captures or frame captures, as, as I like to say it. Uh, why, why don't you dive in on the first tool, Francois, that you've been testing out for, for frame captures? W- what do you think about acrylic Wi-Fi professional? Yeah, so we tried to find different uh, affordable ways to uh, capture 8 to 11 packets on the Windows. Um, so acrylic Wi-Fi professional is a tool you can purchase for about $40. Uh, you can just pay it for a flat fee of $40 or you can purchase it every year for $20 uh, depending on how you want to use the tool and for how long. Um, and it's a tool that allows you to do, um, you know, packet 802.11 packet captures. Uh, something we should mention is on Windows, if you open like a Wireshark or any other uh, packet capture tools and start capturing on your Wi-Fi cards, you will not actually capture the 802.11 packets. Uh, you will capture only the packets on the channels you're connected to. And this will pretty much be, you know, layer three and and over. So you won't see all the, you know, the good layer two, 802.11 stuff that we like. Yeah, basically the radio tap headers. Yeah, and plus the radio tap headers. So you need to find uh, alternative solutions. So um, Acrylic Wi-Fi allows you to do that. And... um, well, the, the how it works it has a built-in 811 packet capture tools within the application so you'll see a tab that will allow you to see the packets and uh, in order for it to work uh, it uses uh, the uh, NDIS driver that you'll install on your Wi-Fi NIC right and then NDIS driver it's basically uh, it stands for network driver interface specification and it's um, it's pretty much a library from Microsoft which allows you to differentiate the hardware driver of your Wi-Fi NIC and the software driver of the Wi-Fi NICs which allows you to put your NIC into the monitor mode and then once your NIC is into monitor mode you can there then uh, capture all the 802.11 packets on the on the channels that that you uh, that you want right yeah, because that that monitor mode is pretty important, and with Windows, I guess that that has always been the challenge with the built-in NIC, is that the driver doesn't have that capability to capture all the like the headers that we need for 
the wireless frames. And so that's why you need either this piece of software or or specific NIC cards or um, yeah, the, the, the right tools in order to get everything you need for analysis. Yeah, and I think when we talk about packet capture, it's important to keep in mind that the, the driver of the Wi-Fi NIC is very important because that's what's going to allow the card to be into monitor mode. And the way you know each Wi-Fi NIC works is different from one another. Um, so that's why uh, if you go on the Acrylic Wi-Fi website, we'll put the link in the show notes, but they have a list of compatible NIC that they work with. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I did a test with my uh, Windows laptop and I, I installed the, the NDIS driver and I, I tried to capture some packets and it wasn't working that well because the NIC that I have into, you know, integrated into my laptop is not really compatible with the, uh, the way it works and the monitor mode wasn't working properly. I couldn't choose my channels and so on. So what I try, what I started to do is, and I started to, um, you know, dig all the Wi-Fi adapter I had available, and it, and I did some testing on some of them. <laughs> so, uh, Acrylic Wi-Fi recommends three of them. If you if you don't have any and you're looking at purchasing some to use with the application, uh, they're recommending three of them that works well with the monitor mode. Um, the the D Link DWA one eighty two Revision A one the Netgear A6200, and the Asus USB AC53. Um, yep, and I, I do have experience with the Netgear A6200, and that's the one that I have. I have three of those, that, which we'll get to later, that I've used with OmniPeak, and uh, those, those adapters work very well for packet captures. And so, so yeah, so if you want to be sure and then you want to use the application, you want to be sure it's going to work well with the NDIS driver and the monitor mode, you can go ahead and, and, and try those ones. Um, when you use the application, try to keep in mind that by default, it will, uh, it will do a channel hopping. So it will listen, scan mm -hmm. on each channel for a little time and then hop to the next channel and so on. Typically, when we do pilot packet captures, Wi-Fi packet captures, we want to focus on one specific channel. Uh, so you would want to change that settings and make sure you select the right channel. So you want to, you want to uh, scan before you start your packet captures. Uh, we will include a couple of uh, screenshots into the show notes so you guys see exactly what we mean. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's, that's pretty important because unless you're just capturing packets for fun, you'll just be capturing everything. So yeah. You want to set that to a specific channel for the one that you're troubleshooting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it doesn't really. You you could do, you could select multiple channels and and scan on different channels using one card. But if you do so, you might miss some packets uh, while you're listening on the you know secondary channels. Uh, uh, and I don't believe the. Do you know if it supports? Do you know if it supports multiple NIC cards? Um, so if I have three, can I? Can I scan on one, six, and eleven with three of them and aggregate those those NIC cards? I know, I know the application will detect that you have multiple cards, but I don't know if you can pick and choose which channels to scan with 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 mm. which okay. adapter. Um, so All right. yeah, That's something I'll have to test too. I mean, at the at the cost that they're giving it to you, forty bucks You'd for a one time fee, or even just twenty bucks for one year, you might as well you know get this application and try it out. Yeah, I'd be surprised for that price, but you know, you never know. <laughs> if you guys, if you guys know, let us know uh, in the comments or on Twitter. Uh, we'll share, we'll share it out with with everyone. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, uh, you have the ability to see the packets while you capture them, kind of like in Wireshark. Uh, more in a sim, it, it's more like a, a simple way to just to make sure you're capturing packets. Actually, I wasn't a, a you know big fan of the interface. What I did is saved the file as the PCAP file and then opened it with uh, Wireshark uh, in order to mm -hmm. be able to use the the filter I'm I'm used to work with. Uh, so you, you can totally do that. You could. Uh, you could export it to Wireshark. You even have an integration with Wireshark where you could capture it mm, okay. directly from Wireshark. Uh, it, it works kind of like uh, how the, the the new MetaGeek IPA solution works. So we'll talk about that uh, later again, but it's kind of like the same idea. So you once you install all the NDIS driver uh, and that your card is uh, you know, able to go into monitor mode, you can select the card directly into Wireshark if you go in, in the right menu. Um, so that's, okay. that's, that's a nice feature, I think. 
Uh, and then the tool has other features. It doesn't just do packet capture. You can do, you know, it, it's a typical Wi-Fi scanner. You can show your your Wi-Fi network. And then if you're into monitor mode, you actually get a little extra uh, that data, like uh, retry rates and, and uh, other metrics that you wouldn't get if you don't use the monitor mode. Uh, you also get the, uh, you know, hidden society. It's kind of like a Wi-Fi Explorer. If you guys use macOS, it's kind of like a Wi-Fi Explorer Lite uh, for for Windows. Uh, you can do... Re- oh, okay. That's good to know. Yeah, you can do reports. Uh, you can export the beacons. You can display more details, uh, um, you know, the, the beacons, uh, information elements. Um, so... It's um, we'll put we'll put the the link in the show notes if you guys want to try it out. You can try it for four days if you're interested in in trying the tool. Um, so just uh, just to to uh, kind of repeat what I said, but the nick you will use will be uh, critical into the you know the the type of uh, uh, service you'll get. Um, so if you use a, a good nick, you you're going to be able to have you know the the application work. In a in a good way, uh, the application is going to be reliable and and capture the packets. If the NIC is not, you know, if the drivers of the NIC works, um, it doesn't work fully work with the monitor mode. You might get mixed results. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you have a air, okay, yeah. yeah, and I think that's a the, this application again at the cost is is going to be very useful for everybody who's trying to get in there. And learn some packet analysis, even for uh, the CWAP. If you're if you're studying for that exam, this is going to be a great way for you to get in there and learn how Wi-Fi works just by just by learning and looking at all these different frames that you see. That's that's going through the air and having the ability to to show the retry rate too is is one of my favorite things because I want to see what the retry rate is in the environment from a client's perspective. So. If I'm down there troubleshooting an issue, I want to be near the client that's having the problems and be able to capture frames there and see, all right, there is a high retry rate here in this environment. Then you should, that, that should lead you to take some next step actions there and, and try to figure out the issue. Yeah, and, and, and there's even a cheaper option. Uh, which is to use a tool uh, from Microsoft itself. It's called Microsoft Network Monitor. And it's actually uh, an application that's uh, archived right now. Uh, I think if you go on the Microsoft website, it's dated back to 2011. Um, but you can still download it and, and install it on your on your Windows platform. And this is pretty, this, this will pretty much allows you to do the same thing, capture 802.11 packets, uh, but for free, mm-hmm. the application is free, so all you have to buy is the adapter. Um, yeah, yeah free so is good. <laughs> yeah, free is nice, right? Uh, so we'll we'll put some uh, videos on on the and some useful links, tutorials in the show notes, so you guys can can take a look at it. Um, it will not work with all all NICs. So I've done some testing with the NICs I have, and uh, we will include the link in the, the you know the results of my testing in the show notes as well. If you guys are interested to see if uh, the NICs you have will work with the application, um, and uh, also something to mention with the uh, Net- Microsoft Network Monitor, uh, when it captures the packets, it doesn't have a, ra- a radio tap uh, header. It's a different uh, header that they add. It's called uh, Netmon. Uh, layer one header mm. and it's it doesn't show you exactly the same information as the radio tap header and i found the results to be sometimes inconsistent and sometimes um, you know it wouldn't make any sense to me uh like for for instance i tried the nick uh, 300 and then the rssi reported by the nick will always be uh, 30 dbm in the header um, no matter what so I, no, yeah i don't think we can rely on that um uh, the, the, the acrylic Wi-Fi application gives you the radio tap header. Uh, so the same type of uh, header and, you... And that's what's important for what... We really want those radio tap headers. So I would strongly recommend going with at least acrylic Wi-Fi over Microsoft Network Monitor just for that reason. Yeah, and, and if you have no idea what a radio tap header is, um, there's a good article from... Um, 
uh, Nigel Borden on his uh, blog that explains what it is. And also Adrian Ganados did a, a presentation this year at WLPC where he talked about the different type of headers, play one headers. Uh, and it's it's a very interesting. You just learn uh, how how that part of the you know the the, the communication works, so the process uh, works. So we'll 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 add the links as well in the show notes, so you guys can uh, take a look at those. Um, it's useful, uh, like you, like Rowell said, if you use, if you studying for CWAP, it's uh, very useful information. Uh, so with the free tool Microsoft Network Monitor, you can same way as the acrylic Wi-Fi, you can uh, save your file as a as a capture file. It's not going to be a PCAP; it's going to be a CAP cap, uh, but you can still open it in Wireshark and analyze the the results. Um, awesome. So that that was the second tool, and moving on moving on to a next tool um, would be the ARP cap. That's more an adapter. AirPCAP adapter. Um, it's kind of hard to yeah, to now, find nowadays. It, they are hard to find. I don't think they um, make these anymore. So <laughs> it's uh, whatever you can find out there on the internet. Yeah. Uh, if you f if you look on, uh, I found a couple. Uh, some researchers st still do have some in stock, so they'll they'll sell them to you. It's it's uh, pricey. I think I found one in Canada for eight hundred and fifty Canadian dollars. Um, yeah, they, but, they are not cheap. They're, they're, they're pretty expensive in my opinion. And I was, <clears throat> I was fortunate, fortunate enough to have my employer, um, pay for one. And that's what I was using when I was using uh, windows. But, uh, you, the, the one I have is the air P cap NX, which is actually from riverbed. And what's neat about this adapter is that you can actually put an external, antenna connect an external antenna to it and i've used this to to uh, capture packets with wireshark you can use wireshark directly with this and you could also use it with um metageek ipa so it, it's a it's a compatible adapter for windows there's a driver for it you have to install it and uh, you can select which channels you want to to sniff frames on so it I, I found it to be pretty reliable in terms of the adapter itself and also the driver set that it comes with. But again, it's uh, it's fairly expensive, in my opinion, just to capture frames. And also it is only 802.11n, so you're not going to get um, 811 AC out of this adapter, and I don't think they make them anymore. Yeah, I think the big advantage is uh, the reliability. Uh, you can use it right into Wireshark, like you said. You can use multiple adapters if you want to capture on multiple channels at a time, uh, and then yeah, you can combine them. It's it's right in the application, the driver that you install. It, it comes with an application, and you could you could aggregate a number of those adapters together. So that's that's a plus. The uh, the disadvantages would be that it's it's very pricey and it's dated a little bit. So um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, if and, and maybe we should mention why aggregating multiple adapters is a is actually an advantage for you. Um, let's say you're trying to troubleshoot roaming, for example, right? You want to capture frames of of a device that's on say channel 36, and as it's roaming to another channel, you want to capture that roam. So you want to set the other adapter to the channel that you know it's going to roam to, say channel one, and then you'll be able to see that full handoff there, that that reassociation, and um, be able to troubleshoot any issues that that occur there with roaming. Even be able to capture frames to identify any latency, for example, if you're doing voice over um, roaming with voice packets. So you want to be able to capture that as well. So there, there's a there's a lot of um, pluses to being able to aggregate adapters and you can just capture a lot more if you're able to aggregate them. Yeah. Um, and the tools we're presenting, you know, today in this episode, it's more like if you want to do packet capture for your, I would say, you know, like to study or uh, to validate something on one specific channels. If you want to do uh, professional work and capture on multiple channels, do troubleshooting, uh, on site for a client, uh, you know, I would recommend using a more professional tools, 
we, we can talk about it at the end of the p- episode, but or a MacBook. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving on to the next tool is uh, it's called MetaGeek. It's from MetaGeek. It's called IPA, and IPA it's pretty much their protocol. Uh, analyzer tool and you can capture packets directly into the tool once again you once again you need the proper adapter to do so uh, so they used to sell the uh, I think maybe they still do uh, the they used to sell the air pickup adapter with the application so you could uh, you know use yeah. it to yeah. capture packets um, but since it's dated a little bit uh, and it doesn't support AC uh, they actually added support for a couple more adapters the Linksys AE1200 the Linksys AE2500 and the Netgear A6200 um, and the way it works it works exactly the same way as for Acrylic Wi-Fi's you will install the NDIS uh, driver for those adapters and you'll be able to use them directly into the MetaGeek PA applications or directly into the the Wireshark your Wireshark application and uh, what's really cool about MetaGeek, if you're if you're really just trying to find what the problem is, when you're capturing frames, it'll then analyze them after you're you're done capturing, and it visualizes all of those frame captures for you, so it can put it into um, uh, like a pie chart to tell you how much of those frames captured were management frames versus data frames, for example. Yeah. So I think um, MetaGeek IPA is it's kind of a like a, a, a wire shark on steroids basically because you can take a wire shark capture and open that up in MetaGeek IPA just to get the visualization if that's what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, it's uh, I like the visualization. It's really nice if you want to show your customer or if you want to quickly understand, you know, what the airtime utilization is and how you know uh, what's the proportion of management packets versus data and and, and so on. Yeah, even retry rates. Yeah. Um, it, it tells you um, which client is talking the most. But yeah, it's a it's a really great application. I was using that for for a long time because I need to figure out the problem quickly so that I was able to do so with MetaGeek IPA, just trying to see what's in the air quickly. Because as you know, if you've used Wireshark, you're just going to get a lot of frames. And without, if, if, you, if you don't even have the right profile in Wireshark to colorize those frames, it's going to be fairly difficult to sift through that and try to figure out what you're looking for, right? So MetaGeek IPA helps with with um, identifying those frames easily, which ones you're looking at. Um, and it's a neat little application, I think, for mm-hmm. Windows applications. It is It is a little bit more expensive uh, because it's considered a professional application. So it's about uh, $800, I believe. Um, so it's a little bit exp- more expensive than the other ones. But you, like you said, you get, you get uh, more analysis uh, after the packet capture uh, to work with and to, to analyze your environment. So, oh. yeah, And I think they're starting to work on some new features for MetaGeek IPA. So we, that's something that we uh, should be looking forward to is what they're going to update with this application and what other new features they're going to add. Yeah, they are, they're trying to have IPA, um, uh, you know, capturing 8 to 11 AC packets for this thing in, on the article. It's going to be uh, set to release for this summer. So we'll see. Oh, okay. Uh, we have we have a link to one of a, a blog article there they wrote recently, uh, where it explains how you can uh, capture packets directly into into uh, Wireshark. Um, and yeah, so we'll link to that in in the show notes as well. Yeah, using using the you know the Linksys uh, adapters, so not necessarily having to use the Air Pickup adapter. You can pick up a Linksys or an Gear adapter for you know for for cheaper. On Amazon and and then uh, and then s- and starts using it to capture packets, so it's a cheaper solution. Awesome. Um, and then we uh, for the for the end, I kept the uh, the OmniPeak solution, which is a, a more of a professional solution. Um, it it costs way more yeah, money. Yeah, this is more of an enterprise yeah. solution, and I've used OmniPeak as well, so I've compared quite a bit of uh, these these capture applications and OmniPeak uh, you, you you need to get adapters for it as well uh, you, you need adapters for all of these really and they 
uh, when I was using it, they were bundling it with the Netgear A6210. They just um, you know apply their 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 branding on it, so it looks like a Savius adapter. But they're really network, I mean Netgear adapters. And uh, what I used it for was to aggregate my captures. So I would combine three adapters together and then capture on three different channels. And OmniPeak does a very nice job of <clears throat> of aggregating, <clears throat> sorry, of aggregating all of those frames together in a single window, and uh, you can perform your analysis pretty easily. There's a there's a lot of different features within OmniPeak. One of the ones I remember the most is the expert view, and so it'll highlight some of the uh, either the problems or something that you should be looking at much more easily through OmniPeak because it's got that. Um, uh, what they call expert analysis there. It has a separate section for analyzing voice frames, for example. It'll also have some visualizations in there for uh, capturing uh, how many types of frames did you capture and also which of those frames are coming from which devices. So w what's talking the most during that capture. So the, I would say the, the, the one part that I didn't really like the most was was trying to learn all the different filters for, for OmniPeak because I was so familiar with using Wireshark. And so I know the Wireshark filters very well. It's not the same type of filters you would use in Wireshark. OmniPeak uses their own, I guess, um, their own syntax for, for trying to figure out, uh, for trying to find the frames you're looking for. But this is more of an enterprise type solution. So their, what they call their capture engine is, is is very very good it's uh very well developed it's kind of this ro robust way of capturing frames because you could tie other pieces to to omnipeak they have a remote assistant um which is uh being able to capture network data anywhere and uh it as you know with a lot of these other applications omnipeak is not just a wireless capture uh, application it's used also for the wired side as well so it's more than just wireless it's kind of a all-encompassing capture utility and uh, yeah it's it, it, it's also available with the um, 11 AC so you should be able to use 11 AC adapters on there to capture everything you need so this is one of the applications with the adapters that is already updated for 802.11 AC which is going to be important now since most networks should be on 802.11 AC and uh, I guess what's more challenging is when we move to 11 AX. Yeah yeah we'll see I guess they, <clears throat> they have to adapt the way they do things so we can actually cap their packets. I'm not sure how they do it. Uh, maybe we should have Adrian on the show to talk about that. He probably knows more about that. Yeah so out of these applications I would say my favorite by far is still using Wireshark with um, with an adapter that's compatible with Windows. Just because Wireshark, for one, is free, all you need to do is get the adapter, uh, an 802.11 AC adapter that'll be that'll be um, useful. And from there, I'm just so used to using Wireshark that I can't um, see myself using any other application. And if I do. I would say my my next go-to would probably be OmniPeak because of the flexibility and all the feature sets that come within OmniPeak, although that comes at a cost. So if you're looking for enterprise-grade reliability and um, something that gets uh, updated and developed quite regularly, then OmniPeak is the way to go. There's a lot of people that actually swear by OmniPeak. And um, then from there, I would say... MetaGeek IPA, but it's very hard to compete against acrylic Wi-Fi, which uh, acrylic Wi-Fi professional, which you can get for forty bucks, which is a really great deal if you're trying to just get started with packet captures. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, if you if you're gonna buy OmniPeak, you might as well buy a MacBook. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, just buy a MacBook. <laughs> But we understand some of you guys can't use MacBooks, so that's why we included no, this episode. You know, here. I do I've have seen, a Windows laptop, so yeah. You know, sometimes we, uh, you know, as you know, 
uh, as Wi-Fi engineers, we we like the we love the MacBook because it allows us to do packet capture easily. But you know, most of the most of the people, most of companies still use Windows, um, especially. When I go in, when I go back to France and I go teach over there, and I'm like, "Oh, this is a tool I have on Mac," and then no one has a Mac. I'm like, "Okay," um, and everyone uses Windows over there <laughs> because that's what the company buys for them. So that's it's a challenge uh, for you. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's a challenge, but at, at the same time, it's good. You know, we we can come up with those type of episodes and and try out new things and and try to um, yeah yeah it gets us familiar with what's out there and who knows maybe there's something better that's not on the mac right we're just so used to working on macs that uh, yeah I, we don't want to ignore what else is out there I mean, we haven't even touched upon linux for example yeah yeah <laughs> exactly maybe yeah <laughs> maybe in the future <laughs> That's a whole other. That's going to take me a while to get used to <laughs> if we do yeah. an episode on that. Um, but w one of the things that will interest me is how we're going to do packet captures with 802.11 AX because we'll need for one need adapters for 802.11 AX or we'll have to buy a new Mac, for example. <laughs> but uh, what is that going to look like once once you have those adapters with the coloring and the yeah. all the spatial streams that are that are available it's it's going to be a lot more complex once we start yeah uh, capturing or maybe it'll be easier if we use one of the applications that will help visualize that for us so we should be looking at omnipeak and and metageek to kind of set the the stage here for the next generation of like, wi-fi captures yeah. Well, we're supposed to see the you know the, the first uh, AX Enterprise APs pretty soon this month, I think, from uh, Aerohive. So, uh, yeah, if you want to be able to capture, and then I don't know if we have any clients yet, AX clients yet. I haven't heard of any, but it's going to come. Yeah, I'm uh, not probably I'm this not year sure if so. there are any out there, but yeah, if there are, uh, I'll probably try to get my hands on one. Well, I've seen screenshot of uh, AX frames on LinkedIn and. And Twitter, I believe. So yeah, they came from somewhere, from no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it came from Arrowhive. Uh, I mean, they have their a AX AP, and oh, Adrian has so they, uh, yeah. AX. Uh, he can read AX frames within his app, Wi Fi Explorer application. So that's the first that we've seen to be able to see so, those frames. But So do you think yeah, they use the AP's to forward. capture the frames? Most likely. Yeah, I don't see unless they got some secret client. I don't know. <laughs> they probably know something we don't. <laughs> yes. Well, if you guys want to learn more, um, head over to the show notes. We'll list out all the links that we've mentioned here and all the tools. And just just for a recap, that uh, Francois talked about Acrylic Wi-Fi Professional, uh, Microsoft Network Monitor, AirPCap, MetaGeek IPA and Savius OmniPeak as uh, applications that you could use for capturing wireless uh, packets and, and looking at frames and analysis. So if there's anything that we're missing, feel free to let us know and we'll actually take a look at it and also add that to the show notes. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment on, on the page there and let us know what you're using on Windows. What, what do you find reliable? And what you have any tips for people for for doing packet captures on windows but yeah anything else you want to add francois yeah i think i didn't we didn't talk about uh npcap um from nmap i believe you can i've never tested it but i believe i've seen it somewhere you can use it to packet capture i uh, do some packet capture on windows so mm, okay. uh, if some people have some experience with that uh, maybe they can share it with us and and let us know how how it works how well it works cool well, I want to thank you guys for listening. Always uh, head over to the website, clearsend.net. And also want to rem remind you guys that's a brand new website. So let us know what you guys think. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys on the next, on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.